welcome to Tathastu. You are watching a Satrap video where we discuss the previous year questions that have emerged in UPSC Civil Services Examination. This question is a 2022 question. This question had come in 2020 in the UPSC prelims of Civil Services Examination. Now, in this question, as I have already mentioned in all my previous videos, UPSC is not expecting you to know the technical details about the questions that it asks you. It is giving you a sure, short way to solve this answer. You just need to figure that out. You just need to know, you just need to have a mere awareness of the things that are going on around you. And similarly, this question too, we will try to solve with minimum basic knowledge. UPSC is not expecting you to have a lot of detailed knowledge, especially for general studies because the very word general is asking you just to have a basic understanding, a general understanding. So, let us see how we can solve this question. So, the question is about ball guard 1 and ball guard 2. As usual, we will try to figure out this word, we will try to break this word and try to figure out where we have come across this. Now, cotton plants, the cotton crop and this is the cotton in the cotton crop. This is the kind of structure in which cotton is cultivated. It is a natural form, in its natural form cotton crops appear like this, where the seed is amidst a chunk of cotton fibers and this structure as given in our NCRT 6 standard is known as a ball. So, this knowledge was enough for us to know the slight relationship that could have been established in this question. Moving on, at this year in 2020, there was a kind of current affairs roaming around. There was a huge cry going around amongst farmer community in Maharashtra, Gujarat about a pest known as ball worm. Okay? There was a pink ball worm. There was an American ball worm. And there were spiny ballworms. These were actually pests. Coming from this word ball, this pest is going to infest this ball. So, naturally, the clear instinct that should strike our mind is this ball. This ball spelling is not very common. And this is used only in the context of cotton and that is why we can simply relate it to something which is protecting our ball against a ball worm. So, this is the basic understanding which was enough for us to solve this question. Why? Because clonal propagation. So, if we have a clonal propagation of a crop, if we have a clonal propagation of any organism, the characteristic features of both the clone and the parent will be same. Which means there is no scope of something like ball guard or otherwise occurring. So, that is why we can eliminate this option all at once. Moving on to developing genetically modified crop plants. We do not have a sure shot elimination for this. So, let us keep this at hand. Moving on to production of plant growth substances. When we are talking of something which has to guard, there is definitely no element of growth involved or no element of growth will be a part of that scheme. So, we can eliminate this and biofertilizers can also be eliminated if you must have heard about this ball worm. Now, if you have not, I will tell you a little few things about this whole history. So, in 2002, there is a committee known as 
जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग अप्रेजल कमिटी दिस वर्क अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज दिस जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग अप्रेजल कमिटी गेव अप्रूवल फॉर अ क्रॉप नोन एज बी टी कॉटन दिस वॉज अ रेवल्यूशनरी स्टेप Why? Because before this, no genetically modified crop had ever been allowed for commercial usage in India, because we don't know what are the harmful effects or what are the further generational changes that a genetically modified organism may bring to our environment and ecology. So that is why. we were very skeptical about giving any kind of grants or clearances to genetically modified organisms be it crops be it food items there are genetically modified varieties of tomatoes known as flower sour tomato there is a bt brinjal but all these have not yet been approved in india the very reason being the very reason being is the in imminent threat that we do not know that they pose to us so this is the reason we are not still approving them for commercial usage they are still in use for experimental purposes where we are trying to figure out what is wrong with it what are the possible harmful effects they can have so that is why when in 2002 the government the gec gave clearance for bt cotton it was a very big revolution farmers were very happy that they could get something a crop yield which was resistant to pests they didn't have to apply pesticide separately because the bt cotton had a toxin called bacillus thuringiens this bacillus thuringiens was what which was a toxin for all the pests and it was able to kill the pests and therefore therefore keep our cotton crop free of pests specially ball worms but then what happened is the pests these pests they started getting resistant to this toxin the toxin that was produced by bacillus thuringiens to kill these pests were no more effective on it so then what happened is we developed genetic modification we started genetically modifying the bacillus thuringiens which we were supposed to inject into the cotton what did we do to this we added two genes cry1ac cry2ab these were the two genes which were added by genetic modification to the bacillus thuringiens and because of this the resistance that these pests had developed the resistance that these pests had developed for the bacillus thuringiens toxin the pests such as we talked about right pink ball worm pink ball worm american ball worm now these genes were able to target even these pests and cause their disintegration thereby keeping our cotton productivity high the fibers were of good quality and the produce was also better the farmers did not have to spend a lot in pesticides or in any kind of pest infestation protection for their fields and this is the reason this cry 1ac and cry 2ab were developed by icar so that 
the resistance that BT cotton worms had developed to the bacillus thuringiens toxin that could be overcome. And the nomenclature of those cotton crops which had the cry 1 AC and cry 2 AB genes were known as Bolgard 1 and Bolgard 2. This was the current affairs of those years of 2020. Somewhere around this time, this whole hoopla was happening and because of which UPSC was very much interested in asking you this question. So, with this we come to an end of discussing this question. Thanks for watching.